Shalom Ya Sarala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rachaha Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to the Aquathium that be listening in today. Back at you with another lesson entitled, The Great Day of the Lord is Near. Okay, we can see, um, well, for one, we can see we have a more sure word of prophecy, as the scriptures say, because everything is happening according to how the prophets of the Heavenly Father, beginning with the elder apostles of Great Millstone on down, have said things would happen, man. Things are playing out according to the book. Okay, so we know and understand. We can see that the great day of the Lord is near, man. You know, you've got the wars and the rumours of war. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a particular clan of people in Russia that now want Putin dead. You know? Um, the, 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 the MOTB, the infrastructure. Every day we're getting closer and closer. You know, the uh, the CBDC is become is is being talked about a lot more. It's well known now, and uh, of course we know where that where that's going. We know what that's leading to, right? So the the, the people are waxing worse and worse every day. Every day our people are falling further away from the truth. Okay, so also Esau is being revealed for his wickedness. All right, you know, the scriptures say how the wicked shall be revealed and then the end shall come. All right, so everything is happening according to, bib to, to biblical prophecy, man. You know, you cannot de deny the, uh, the, valid <laughs> the validity of the scriptures, man. Okay, Isaiah 34 and 16 says, none shall want her mate. That's going into all these other so-called holy books like the Quran and the Book of Mormon and all that nonsense, man. All right, people are going to know and understand that the Bible is the truth and those that had the true understanding of the scriptures were those uh, men of Great Millstone and, you know, the, the, the offshoot camps that teach the same doctrine. Okay. You know, the, the scriptures describe the day of the Lord as, you know, fiery judgment, man. Okay, hence why we got this picture here. Okay, and that fire is going to come by way of um, nuclear missiles and um, concentrated fire from the chariots, man. The so-called UFOs, a.k.a. laser beams, man, coming out of those chariots. And we had a chariot sighting um, at the camp on Saturday. But, you know, I just finished up watching uh, the, the elders... Apostles of, of GMS I finished like watching their camp And they saw a chariot And then you've got the beloved brother Amwan Gabar who's all, Who also teaches out of New York And they had a chariot sighting All on the same day man Alright so You know We are living in very prophetic times right now And now is a high time to awake out of sleep man Now is not the time to get weak Now is the time to get strong Keep your oil strong Stay prayed up you know, stay uh, in the spirit of the Lord. Pray Psalms 51 that the Lord don't take his spirit off you, man. Because, you know, we're living in a time where there's many great distractions going on. Like that whole submarine thing. But there's many other things, major things going on in the world, man. You know, so, so you know, we have to uh, be on our watch, man. You know, I have set a watchman on the, on, um, on the, on the tower, man. What's that? Uh, Ezekiel. Okay. But without further ado... Let's bring out these precepts, man. You know, I'm on my lunch break right now, so time's a bit limited. This is First Thessalonians 5 and 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You know, it should be clear as day, uh, the times that we're in now. You know, you, you, even Stevie Wonder can see that, um, you know, we're in the last days right now, man. All right, it doesn't take a genius to, to, to work that out, but our people are so dumbed down, docile, and, you know, uh, they got all these different distractions in the world, 
all right which esau has deliberately done to keep our people in a, in a, in, a, in a you know in an uneducated state but you know the signs are all here man if you if if you if the, the heavenly father is giving you the eye salve to see you will see that we are clearly living in the last days man the last of uh, uh esau edom's empire man second Ezra six and nine for esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? Let's read it on verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Yeah. It's going to come as a thief in the night for two-thirds of the nation of Israel. As well as, um, as, well as uh, uh, the other nations, man. But for the elect, which we pray we're the hopeful elect, it's not going to come as a surprise to us. Because we are, uh, we're measuring the times diligently, as it reads in 2nd Ezra 9. And, you know, we're, uh, um, you know, well, first of all, we, we want the day of the Lord to come. And whenever we hear that we're one step closer to the MOTB, you know, one step closer to World War Three, we rejoice, man. Because we know and understand that in order for us to, to enter into the kingdom, these things need to come to pass, man. There ain't no easy uh, uh, ride getting into the kingdom. Okay. Verse three, for when they shall say peace and safety... Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So these calamities that are coming upon the earth, they ain't going to be able to escape. Two thirds of the nation of Israel and, and the other nations are going to get caught up in these woes, man. Okay. And, you know, Jake is going to get caught up in it for their disbelief, man. You know, they didn't want to hearken on to the truth. But now you got some nonsense like AI Jesus, man. And trust me, Jake, Jake would rather run to AI Jesus than the men of the Lord who have been teaching the, the, the sincere, true words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? That's how dumbed down our people are, man. But look, man, that day of the Lord is coming, man. And that's going to be, you know, look, there's only one truth, man. And those, you know, you're going to know who has the truth in that day. All right. Because the elect are going to be under a different vibration man they're going to be operating differently they're going to be in a different spirit than you niggas in the world man okay it says uh isaiah 33 and 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and and the and, and uh, what's it the fear of the lord is 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 his treasure and strength of salvation okay well so uh, these other nations they're going to be bugging out uh, two-thirds of the nation of israel they're going to be bugging out too all right but we have a more sure word of prophecy, man. All these things that are written in the scriptures that we learn are coming to pass, man. So we have no doubt. We have no reason to doubt Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Even though, yeah, we're heading, into, we're heading into a time of great destruction, a time of great trouble. Well, well, you know, we know that that, that the Lord is going to defend us, man. Let's quickly bring out um, um, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10 and it reads look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him so who has the Lord despised that called upon him man all right so Romans 15 and 4 the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning so we read like you know for example shadrach meshach and abednego you know um, um when they were thrown into that fiery furnace they trusted in the lord man and they didn't get they didn't get touched that fire didn't even burn them man okay this is the power that we serve yahweh bahashem yahweh shai all right and he's gonna you know in these last days he's getting ready to lift up a standard Against these, uh, um, um, you know, these devils, man, that are trying to come down on us with great wrath. Okay. So, Rock 2 and 11, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. Uh, our Lord saves in time of affliction, man. Okay. And we are heading into a major time of affliction. We're heading into Jacob's trouble. Uh, spoken of in Jeremiah 30 and 7 man So we, we're, we're heading into a time where We're going to need the Lord more than ever But also we're going to have to trust in the Lord More than ever man Not on our own uh, uh, You know 
Curse be the man that trusteth in man. You know, not, you're not meant to trust in yourself, not meant to trust in your government. You're meant to put all your trust in your Hawaba Shumi Al Shai. There ain't no plan B, man. There's only one plan, and that's to trust in the Lord, man. Okay, not not all, but just in case that don't work out, I'm just gonna, you know, do doomsday prep. No, we don't do that, man. We're doomsday prep <laughs> prepping in the spirit, which is uh, you know, increasing our knowledge and understanding of our of the power we serve, man. Okay? And doing the things that please him to the best of our ability. This is Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Okay, this day right here, man. This is the day that's going to come that's going to burn as an oven, man. Okay? And the world ain't prepared for this. Majority of the world don't understand. They're going to die in World War Three, man. Okay? For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So, so you know, and, and, and main, the, the, the land that's going to be destroyed the most, or completely destroyed, shall I say, is the land of America, man. That place is going to be destroyed, never to be inhabited again. All right, and the Lord is moving the chess pieces to make sure that the nations uh, ally and come together so that this battle can take place. Okay, you know, it says in Proverbs 21 verse 1 that the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord and he turneth it whithersoever he will. So the Lord is the one that's controlling the minds of these world leaders, man, making sure that things lead down the direction of World War Three, which we can see every day. That's, that's the direction uh, uh, the world events are heading towards, man. World War Three, all right. But you see, the difference is with World War Three is the way it's going to be fought. Of course, you know, knowledge has been increased. Uh, we've had uh, te technological advancements. Isaiah fifty four talks about how the Lord has created the Smith. Um, um, let's get that real quick because I'm getting ready to butcher it. This is Isaiah chapter fifty four. And verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. The waster to, de to destroy is talking about the nuclear missiles. The smith is talking about the modern day scientist who puts all these molecular structures and these atoms together to make these uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> as Esau likes to call it, man. In which they are weapons of mass destruction. Okay, so everything is going according to the to you know uh, the words written within the Bible, man. Because these are the words of the heavenly Father. And if you go to the next chapter, Isaiah fifty five verse eleven, it reads, "How so shall my, my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth? It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it." So then, if you go to Revelation. Uh, uh, Revelation 11 And verse 14 it reads The second world is past And behold the third world cometh quickly So this means it's going to come to pass Because the words don't come out of the Lord's mouth in vain All right? It's going to accomplish uh, uh, that which it pleases man. And then uh, you've got uh, I believe that, that's in 2nd Ezra 7 I'm looking for Is it Yep Second Ezra 7 and 43 But the day of doom Shall be the end of this time And the beginning of the immortality And the beginning of the immortality For to come Wherein corruption is past Okay so That day of doom World War 3 Armageddon Whatever you want to call it That's going to be The end of this current time And then the beginning of it That followeth Which is going to be uh, You know The kingdom of, of heaven you know, uh, um, you know, beginning with Yahweh Shai, the elect, and then the rest of the nation of Israel. Okay, that's the times that um we're heading into now, man. All right. But you see, the world don't see it. The world just see it as, you know, this is the end all be all. All right. Just bear with me a minute. You know, 
I just uh, I got a colleague who's uh, just heading into her car. And you know the spirit's powerful, man. She she didn't even see me, man. I, she didn't even see me, man. <laughs> the wadi, how about she? How shy? You know, but uh, let's read it again. Second Ezra seven and forty three. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, and the beginning of the immortality for to come. You know, you read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter one, it talks about how uh, 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 righteousness is immortality. So you know, if you read First Corinthians fifteen, it talks about how. Um, No, I'm I'm doing something. Huh? I'm doing something right now. Oh, okay. See that? Yeah. First uh, uh, Corinthians 15 talks about how you know we're going to be changed. We're going to receive those new bodies. Um, you know. So uh, damn, just maybe lose my trail of thought, man. You know, so we're going to receive those new bodies, right? Where you know we're going to be made perfect. We ain't gonna go off. We ain't gonna sin. So, uh, therefore, we're going to be immortal, man. Okay. It's like, you know, I don't know why all of a sudden all my colleagues want to come out. Have a smoke break, got this Edomite girl, just, just walk by. Anyways, she walked by anyway, so let's continue on, man. Uh, what's the next one I wanted to get? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. And if I pause again, I do apologize. It's a lucky. Isaiah 9 and 5 for every battle, because uh, this, as I was saying earlier, you know, uh, this war. That we're going to fight this time round is going to be different from all the ancient wars, man. All right. Because we have um, nuclear weapons, which are going to be used, which haven't been used before in warfare because of how destructive they are. But I mean, the Lord is getting ready to wipe this place out. So they're going to be used now. So this is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise um, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire, which of course is going to lead to this. All right. World War Three is biblical, man. And it's going to be a very fiery judgment, man. It's, it's literally going to be hell on earth. Right. It's going to be hell on earth, man. And our people ain't ready for it. Just bear with me a minute. Demons, man. So lucky once again, man. Let's just go through it. What did I want next? Obadiah 1. Verse 15, and it reads, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. All right. So all these other nations have had their part in, in having the nation of Israel in captivity. You can read, um, what's that? Uh, uh, Psalms 83. Okay. All these, all these nations are confederate against us, man. All right. So we're going to be justified in, in having all these other nations as our slaves, man. Beginning with the, uh, uh, the nation of Edom. These Edomites, the so-called white man. Okay. Verse 16 For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. So they're going to be changed into a lower state, man. And they, you know, these heathens, they, they ain't been down uh, uh, in that estate for a minute, man. Because Jake has been the ones that's been oppressed and in the lower state. All right, and, and you know, we're going mad now, you know. The scriptures say how surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, all right. And then you got Ecclesiastes 1 and 18 says, How with much wisdom increaseth sorrow, man. We've been we've woken up to the fact, as Elder Apostle Taha said, 
in, 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 in the camp or on Saturday, we've woken up to the fact that we're being oppressed. So we're, we're fucking mad, man. And we, we want more than reparations, man. We want fucking blood. We want your, we want your, uh, 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 um, you know, we want your heads. We want, we want your slaves. We want your women. All right. We want our, our land back. We ain't been to the nation of Israel in how long now, man? We want all of that back, man. And guess what? When Yahweh Shai returns, we're, you know, we're going to get all of that back. And then some. Okay. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, 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 you know. From the great day of the, that's going to be the outcome from the great day of the Lord, man. Okay, the Israelites being raised back up into power. All right, but let's bring out some more precepts on on, on you know the, the judgment that's coming, man. Zechariah fourteen and twelve, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And what's ab able to do that? Nuclear weaponry, man. Those nuclear missiles are literally going to cause your, uh, your flesh to consume away whilst you stand upon your feet. And, and, and things of that nature, man. You know, you're going to be uh, looking at, it says their faces shall be as flames, man. I'm trying to see where it says that. There's a, there's a scripture that says that, but I can't find it right now, man. All right. But that time is coming, man. That time of great judgment is upon us. All right. Uh, uh, um, you know, the time of judgment is imminent, which judgment goes out every day. Read Zephaniah 3 and 5. But, you know, the, the, the great day of judgment, that's, that's near, man. Okay. Zephaniah 1 and, 1 and 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. So even that big man you thought was all tough, right? He was untouchable. No one could tell him shit. Well, he's going to be screaming like a little bitch in that day. Okay. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, man. And what's going to cause that thick darkness? The... You know, the, the, the mushroom cloud, the smoke that's going to be emitted into the upper atmosphere when these nuclear missiles detonate, man. All right. So there's going to be a time of great judgment, man, that's coming upon this earth whilst everyone is just dilly dallying about acting as if nothing is going to happen or just acting as if if you play the whole ignorance is bliss card, then, you know, uh, 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 um, the, the day of the Lord just won't come. All right. But Romans three and four talks about how we're going to be justified in our sayings man all right bringing out this word we're going to be justified in our saints because these things surely will come to pass man and i'm gonna close out here revelation 6 and 15 and it reads and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, all right, the nuclear bunkers, them underground shelters, okay, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, Yahweh, and from the wrath of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Because no one's going to be able to stand this great time of judgment, man, all right, but it's coming, man. It's coming. The great day of the Lord is near and it hastes greatly. And these niggas still want to piss about and, 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 and drag their feet, man. Well, we'll leave them to it, man. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, as it says in Revelation 22. Okay, but yeah, man, I'm going to have to wrap it up here. So lucky if it seemed a bit rushed, rushed. I pray, Lord willing, it's been edifying. And until the next time I say Shalom.